Yo, Biden, what's good? Yo, we should collab. I did everything Austin Walls taught me and he still said no. And the Secret Service shot me 25 times in the chest. Addison Ray, you know her, everyone knows her. TikTok star who broke the mainstream and now has her very own terrible reality TV show on Snapchat. Because who doesn't love watching TV vertically where for every 10 seconds of show, you get 15 seconds of ads. What a deal. On the upside, it makes it easier for teens to go back and forth between watching Addison Ray and sending snaps of half their face to keep streaks with people they barely even talk to. Addison is basically just doing an influencer circuit speed run of hitting every content medium she can as fast as possible. She was in an awful movie last year, she's been making music, she's in commercials selling a totally legit blue light protective spray. Meet Screen Break, Item Beauty's blue light and anti-pollution face mist. Except artificial blue light isn't proven bad for your skin. Addison, you should know this, your skin looks fine and your job is to use your phone every day. So what is this new reality TV show about? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's called Addison Ray Goes Home and oh golly, is it not very self-aware. And just look at that cover picture. Of course, she's on her phone, probably making a TikTok, sorry, working, looking an awful lot more Southern than usual, laying on a pile of hay or grass or just general debris. Ass and Ray returns to her roots in Louisiana to show fans a more personal side than they have ever seen before. A more personal side? Your entire life is on camera. You can show your personal side anytime you want. Here, watch. I'll do it right now. I wear socks to bed, and I'm proud of it. I didn't need a 10-part Snapchat series to tell you that because I have a little something called integrity and something little called cold feet at night. The names they give these episodes are just fantastic. Ass and Ray's new trailer is giving us life, right? Fellow youth, no cap on that snapback. Addison Ray is totes giving major Gemini energy in this trailer. Addison Ray back in the swamp is the ultimate vibe. Ah. I would have to agree. I was just having a Deese vibe until I saw this. Marvel Ultimate Alliance, more like Addison Ray Ultimate Vibe. And with that shitty joke, let's jump right into it. Once upon a time, I was born in Louisiana. Then I picked up and moved my life to LA. I went from doing dance videos in my living room for friends to posting them to more than 80 million followers. It's brought me a lot of love, but with that comes a lot of hate. That's us, she's talking about us. Now, I'll be going back home to Louisiana for a week with my mom, dad, and my two little brothers. We're going to the lake! I'm kind of nervous. Will I fit in back home? I wonder if it'll be like it used to. It's a single week back home. What are you actually nervous about? Will I fit in back home? Or am I now just an untouchable goddess of social media? Will I be able to hold a normal conversation with these filthy peasants? Or will I accidentally sign an autograph by reflex? I'm still nervous to see my friends and family who knew me before everything. I just hope they remember I'm the same person they've always known. It's giving Hannah Montana movie. I've only seen the show, but big facts. The premise of Addison Ray Goes Home is deliberately to play into this double life world they've created. Can one be famous? and from the south? I didn't think it was possible. Mom, Pa, I've gone TikTok famous. You think I got what it takes? I don't know, Addison. Those LA folks don't take too kindly to us world grounded country women. They think us strange because we do crazy things like like catching crawfish. Growing up, my family and I ate a shit ton of crawfish. So if the idea of the series is to humanize Addison Ray, her going back to her family and non-social media friends, why does it already feel like it accomplishes the exact opposite? I suppose it might have something to do with the fact that you're filming a reality TV show about it. When you know the show producers are setting up specific activities and shots, cutaways and conversations, it sort of takes away from the will I still fit in storyline. No, Addison, you won't. You're coming home with a camera how is anything you're doing supposed to be authentic? For instance, most of the conversations in the show are so scripted that it just feels like Addison is being interviewed. How did you like handle that public breakup? Like, what did you do to like, okay, I'm okay, everything's gonna be fine, and like, not falling apart? Has like, being in that public relationship before changed your opinion on like, when you want to pursue a new relationship? Um, this isn't how friends ask questions. Making some long pointed allusion to her past relationship and how she handled it on and off social media. Simmer down, Oprah. For the Snap execs watching, please take notes because I will now rephrase that question into how Addison Ray's 21 year old friend would actually ask it. So do you and Bryce still fuck? And scene. Thank you. Thank you. I know. Thank you. Good night. It's weird that they never say Bryce Hall in the show. They just kind of refer to it as her public relationship. Being in that public relationship before. As if his name is the TikTok equivalent to Voldemort and should never be spoken of. It's actually been urban legend for centuries that anytime someone says the name, another 16 year old makes a thirst trap and no one wants that. Um, you know, I feel a certain way. I like trust my gut about it mm -hmm. now. I feel like more than ever. 
and like in the past, I feel like I've ignored a lot of things that I knew yeah. I didn't like. Yeah, I red feel like flags. that happens, right? Yeah, it's like red flags. Red flags, good, good. Oh, kids, so trendy. Kids will love that. I didn't even tell her to say that. This kid's a natural being unnatural. Okay, next, ask Addison uh, uh, her biggest green flags that she wants in the next relationship. Go. I think as we all get older, more and more people are recognizing just how fake a setup like this is in a reality show. When you realize in this exact moment that they are surrounded by two different camera operators, a sound team hanging a boom mic above them, and multiple producers watching everything from the sideline, you know it's all planned out. You don't do all of that and then risk a boring conversation about Barbies or dolls or whatever girls talk about. Ask about Bryce, but don't you dare say his name. Here's some blankets to look comfy and some empty mugs to pass as if you're drinking hot cocoa in the summer of Louisiana. Slow down, yeah. take a breath, take everything yeah. in. There's a lot of pitfalls, obstacles, and expectations in my life. But sometimes it's necessary to slow down and prioritize myself. Speaking of fake setup shots, these slow-mo narrations without a doubt are my favorite part of the show. It really emphasizes that Addison is just a real person like us, capable of thoughts and human being emotion. The fact that some people call me their role model feels weird and scary. Some people say they don't know what they're doing, but I definitely don't. Addison, you are a multi-millionaire. I don't think you have the luxury of claiming you don't know what you're doing. You've obviously got some notion of how to capitalize off your fame, this show being an example of that. I find it a bit insulting, actually, for someone of your success to turn around and say, I've got no idea what's going on. I was just dancing in my room and now I use $100 bills as napkins. Feels weird and scary. Am I being provocative again? Absolutely. I just think narrated slow-mo shots of you looking introspective might be the worst way to come off relatable. But that's what this show is all about, right? Addison appearing to be relatable. So each episode sort of focuses on a different relationship back home. One with her best friend, another with her brother, her mom, her aunt. So let's look at how they somehow take these seemingly easy, relatable relationships and turn them into the furthest thing from it starting with her best friend. Now remember, she's friends with Kim Kardashian in LA, so we're gonna need to find someone a bit more approachable for this one. One of the most difficult things about being in the public eye is finding people who are genuine, that I can trust. One person I never have to question, Gussie. One of my best friends growing up and still today. I'm sorry. Gussie? Her name's Gussie? I'm 95% sure you made that up to make her look more grounded in Louisiana. You see, I actually looked up the number of babies named Gussie over the years. On this chart, notice how it kind of stops in 1952. I guess one slipped through the cracks. Regardless of everything that's happened in the past two years, you're one of the only people in my life like yeah. that ever is really like got me. It's so rare to find a friendship like we have. That's what I feel like I've been struggling with lately is like, it's really hard to have someone to talk to and like be able to feel like not judged. Even people that I know in LA now, like it's hard to find people to trust, like truly, because a lot of people don't have your best interests or like will use things against you. Like my vulnerability and like kindness have been taken advantage of so many times in LA. My sister in Christ, let her speak. Your best friend so far has said literally three words, that being yeah, uh-huh, mm-hmm. You know, I think I get why you like her. Like you said, it's nice of a friend that doesn't judge you because you won't let them. I imagine Gussie would like to get her opinion in the conversation, but Addison just keeps going. It's so rare to find a friendship like we have. Yeah, Addison, that's why I- It's really hard to have someone to talk to. No, yeah, I get what you're- Be able to feel like not judged. Yeah. Even mm -hmm. people that I know in LA. Gussie and I have been friends for about seven years. We met when I was starting at a new school in the eighth grade. We were definitely the girls at school that were a little bit different. We like did photo shoots together and liked the same type of music. Uh, we were definitely the weird girls in school. We took pictures, we liked music. We were the outcasts of society. Where'd you go to school, Addison? Rikers? You just named the most basic bitch shit and claimed it as personality. In a voiceover nonetheless, you had time to script this. We were just like kind of alt girls. We got Starbucks every morning and did cheerleading after school. Sometimes on the weekend, we would go to the mall and get Chick-fil-A with waffle fries. We were crazy. I thought you were trying to look relatable in this series. You're losing me. We used to literally do photo shoots every day. I know. Like, we were so random. And they were cool. And like, we always executed them pretty well I for know. being on an iPhone well, and in my backyard. Like, yeah, like, I'm holding a sheet. A up. sheet? Yeah. We were holding, like, sheets in the backyard taking oh photos. God. Hold on, Addison. She said I, not we. I'm holding a sheet. A up. sheet? <laughs> yeah, I was holding the sheet up and you were yelling at me and. Don't fucking move. That's what you said. Stay right there. The lighting on me is perfect. Take the photo, Gussie. Take the fucking photo. <laughs> Mm, good times. Is that the vibe anyone else is picking up? Like Gussie was in Addison's shadow before fame and now she's even more scared of her. It's really awesome you invited me on your reality TV show, Addison. <laughs> Don't fucking talk. <laughs> 
is what you said. Sorry. Can someone go call in a wellness check on my girl Gussie and make sure she's doing all right? So after the nostalgia trip, the girls decide to have a night out on the town, which in Louisiana is called celebrating the one day of the month that God decided not to flood the whole state. So why not let loose? This is where I can let loose and really be myself. We got to let loose. Well, that was quick. Remember in Miss Carpenter's class, we like had that notebook and we wrote in it that we were gonna get a Prius and drive all the way no. to California. Remember we like dreamt about LA forever. I know. Since eighth grade, like, literally. How can we get there? How can we get there now? Well, you can always come whenever you want. Just let me know your dates and I'll write you in the calendar. Ugh, remember when we dreamed of living in LA and now I'm there and you're still here? I'll calendar you in though. It's been two years and it seems like I haven't had you come visit yet. Yeah, just send me or actually my assistant's assistant an email and we'll review it and someone will reach out and let you know if maybe I'm free. Oh my God, actually we could use another lighting assistant for my TikToks. Remember the sheet? Oh my God, you could hold the sheet. It would be just like old times. Poor Gussie. I'm sorry for making fun of your name earlier. You deserve better. So maybe Addison's not the best friend you could ask for, but she's still a family gal, right? We know this because her entire family moved out with her to LA. Ain't that a fucking nightmare? You graduate high school, get famous, move from home, and your parents come with you to ride off your success? I don't entirely blame them. They saw she was making money, said Louisiana can suck one, we're coming for the Hollywood Hills. But apparently Addison hasn't had a chance to talk to her younger brother Enzo about living in LA and not going to school anymore. So let's get his thoughts. I don't really want to go to school again. I didn't like, no, in Baton Rouge, you had like a million followers and everyone was so annoying about it. Really? Yeah. Billy cream cheese and French toast is fire. <laughs> I hate Snapchat so much. What, what were people As, like? Like, no, they were just like mean. To you? Because I No, they would always be like, oh, can you tell Addie to come follow me? Don't make them spell it out, Addison. They said, Enzo, I want to bang your sister. Give her my number. That's how any middle schooler boy conversation would go when your older sister is TikTok famous. It's unfortunately inevitable. Yeah, I hate that. I feel guilty knowing that my brother has been having a hard time making friends in LA. I felt the same way when I moved before. I really want to be there for him and help him through this. No, it's not because you just moved to LA. Were you not listening to him? You're the last person that needs to help him. You're the problem with him making friends. Younger siblings of famous people, I feel for you. It's gotta suck when you get dragged into the spotlight only in relation to your older brother or sister. Take this article, for instance. Addison Ray's brother, Enzo Lopez, joined season seven cast of Chicken Girls. Thanks, Just Jared Jr., for pummeling into this kid that he's only known as Addison Ray's brother. So after my talk with Enzo, I realize it's important to be an even better big sister. So my brothers know I'm always there for them. If you want to be there for them in person, that's great. But maybe don't feature them in your videos and strengthen the online connection they have to you, which they no doubt get bullied for. Her even younger brother, Lucas, is only seven and the internet already hates him. He smell like ketchup. He got a sticky iPad. If garlic was a person. It's a goddamn child. The comments are accurate, but geez, relax, would you? Every episode of this series ultimately follows the exact same structure. Fake emotional one-on-one -on -one conversation, activity time, fake emotional one-on-one -on -one conversation closure, and then Addison will narrate the life lessons she learned today. Because that's obviously how we grow in real life. We spend one day doing stuff, and like a cartoon character, go to bed unlocking a new moral. You know what? I should be a good sister. The formula is so repeated that I'm not even sure why I bothered waiting for the full 10 episodes to come out when I only used footage from the first seven. This whole show boils down to a double as a cash grab as well as a PR play to make you feel bad for an insanely wealthy 21 year old. When I was growing up, it wasn't always easy. My mom was a young mom and learning how to do everything for the first time. We all have our own struggles, but there's always light at the end of the tunnel if you're surrounded by people you love. And if you're not surrounded by people you love, that sucks for you. I guess your tunnel is pitch black and endless. My biggest gripe with this show is that it desperately tries to make Addison growing up in Louisiana synonymous with a rags to riches story, which is a little disparaging. My childhood wasn't always easy. Here's a photo of me having fun on a trampoline. This coupled with the constant mentioning in the show about how online people are mean to Addison makes it come off incredibly privileged. I'm not saying Addison had the perfect child in Louisiana or that she's not affected by online harassment, but they're first world problems and this show does nothing to put that into perspective. And for a production company that claims to champion and collaborate with incredible and underrepresented creators, was the social media giant Addison Rae really the best pick of someone to make a show? Show about. Anyways, that's the video today. Bradison stands. Be sure to subscribe and turn post notifications on, as well as follow me on Instagram at Gunner Klein. I heard that account is giving off major Sagittarius.
notorious vibes these days, and consider becoming a member on Patreon so you can help fund my reality TV show, Gunner Goes to Vegas. That's another joke, I prefer Miami. With that said, good day, y'all. Can someone please go check on Gussie now? Don't move too slow, fine line between